Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode. Uh, this time I'll be playing the N7 Destroyer. So the N7 Destroyer is uh, a pretty interesting character. It works a good bit different than, than everybody else, but I'm picking the Stronghold package for the Shield Recharge. The uh, powers that I've chosen, I'm using Devastator with the weapon accuracy. Uh, instead of the reducing delay, the accuracy is pretty important to me. Uh, magazine size rather than rate of fire, and I'll get to that in a moment. And increased max shields, which means basically I'll be behind cover providing support fire. I'll be able to pop up from cover. Having extra max shields means I'll be able to stay up longer. It also kind of helps mitigate one of the problems of the class is that the Hawk Launcher decreases your maximum shields. Uh, but by stacking extra maximum shields, it kind of works. It kind of compensates for that loss. So for the Hawk Launcher, I'm going with damage, refire time, and the Hydra missiles. In my experience, Cobra missiles seem nice, but the missiles tend to fire wildly off to the side, and they don't really hit the target very effectively, whereas the Hydra missiles seem to be more precise and follow a trajectory more like normal abilities. Uh, health uh, out of here, kind of a balance of damage and power, and later on I'll be picking up more damage. But uh, I'm not level 20 yet. I wanted to respect some soldiers before getting to the, this last little bit. It also knows for a human, the N7 Destroyer has a ton of shields, which is excellent. But the most important bit of news here is that I finally got it. The M7 Lancer, after quite a while of complaining about not having this weapon, I finally got it out of one of the packages. This thing is extraordinary. It, its stats don't may or may not look that impressive, but I assure you it is fantastic. Uh, I've chosen the assault or the the damage and the stability additions because they will basically allow me to keep the weapon trained on the target for an extended period of time, and that's kind of where the magazine improvement comes into play in particular. By having a bigger magazine, I. Uh, I can sustain fire longer and provide more, better cover fire. It sounds like I'm joining a game in progress, so I'm going to get into this ahead of time. Uh, so the Hydra Launcher, if you look on my right shoulder, you can see it's now kind of glowing red. Uh, I got the cooldown activated, you know, the cooldown activates anytime you turn on things like that. But I do want you to see the Hydras without too much screen clutter, because when I activate the... Uh, the other ability, Devastator Mode, the screen gets very, very busy very quickly. Um, the It kind of looks like Predator Vision down in the bottom right, but it's not actually Thermal Vision. It, it just kind of draws what you could see normally, except red. Almost looks like that Nintendo VR thing they tried a long time ago, the Virtual Boy. It's fucking atrocious. But, uh, another thing to keep in mind is that, at least with Devastator Mode going, the uh, N7 Destroyer can't do dodge rolls. You can still use cover as normal, but you can't do cover to cover moves, you can't do dodge rolls. Which, if it catches you off guard, then that can be a serious problem. And you can see already the transformative effect that this gun has on my gameplay. It's such a fantastic weapon. I got it today, I had to play like three or four games just to stop fanboying over it for a minute so I could actually be productive and talk about the class instead of just the weapon. But you're going to be seeing plenty of this gun in the remainder of the videos that I produce because it's it's so good. It's just so good. And it, the only drawback that it really has is that uh, as with all rapid fire weapons, because armor reduces the damage that you deal by 50 per, or by 50, like a flat 50 per projectile. The faster firing a weapon is, generally speaking, the worse it is at dealing with armor. Uh, some weapons have internal modifiers to compensate or completely counter that effect, but in general, that's just how it works. And you can see my ammunition refill in the bottom left. This weapon is so. I love this gun. I don't need thermal clips. The worst case scenario is I overheat the weapon, which I'm going to do now on purpose, and it goes into no ammo. You, you see the dude kind of vents the gun to the side, 
and then it starts recharging. It does not consume a clip even to restore it to functioning. Uh, such a great weapon. Uh, you'll probably also hear uh, me not paying attention. You'll probably also hear the chirping from time to time. What that is is an indicator from the shoulder launcher that uh, it's the the easiest way to think of it is that the missile launcher has detected that there's a target but can't acquire a lock and needs you to give it a clear path to get to the target. Yeah, it's surrounded by abominations and crap. Need to maneuver some. Get into my position. Uh, the shoulder launcher will also fire while you're on the move. So if you're running around a corner, it will sometimes it'll fire at a target as soon as you round a corner from time to time. Uh, it also is very good at locking onto targets at a glance, basically. It will fire and engage targets as soon as they're in, like, toward the center. You know how you get the square outline for a target? That I usually use to aim powers. The uh, the shoulder launcher will acquire them immediately when they enter that range. Uh, there's too many people focused here though, I need to look elsewhere. Yeah. But um, from this ledge here, I can suppress the landing pad extremely well. Uh, as you probably noticed already. The, this gun is just... Between the gun and the class, I don't have a problem just putting people down as fast as they can pop up. And none of the big enemies come from this landing pad either. So uh, it's really easy to suppress the crowds of little guys. First target's down. Uh, you'll also notice I do a lot of burst firing, especially at range. That in almost every shooter with a rapid fire weapon, burst firing at range is recommended, but with this especially, uh, if you're actually paying attention, unlike I was there, you'll get the reload indicator just below the crosshair before you run out of bullets. And so I'm going to pop up there. So if you see the reload indicator, you know to stop shooting for a second. If you're going fully automatic, especially with Devastator mode, because Devastator mode increases your rate of fire anyway, uh, it's pretty easy to miss the reload indicator. But if you're burst firing, chances are with this weapon, because of its magazine size compared to its um, rate of fire, nice punch, but uh, because of the magazine size relative to its rate of fire, the M7 Lancer will typically give you the reload indicator before you run out of ammo. Uh, I mess up sometimes, but that's mostly just because I'm not being attentive enough. And you can see the... It, even if you don't have this weapon, it doesn't really hurt you to play this class with the biggest and heaviest guns you can get your hands on. The shoulder-launched missiles are not affected by cooldown. They're not silenced by swarmers, as you can probably see. Uh, the they're just they just are, and they they're completely independent of what you're doing. The only thing I will say is that. If you're hiding behind cover, the missiles obviously won't fire. If you're, um, what is it? If you are reloading your weapon, which in this case, venting the heat for the lancer counts as reloading. Yeah, shot by something. Um, venting the heat from the lancer count constitutes reloading. Uh, if you're doing that, then you can't fire. There, then they won't fire either. But, for the most part, as long as you keep your weapon trained on target, they'll fire very frequently, regardless of whether or not you're firing, regardless of what else is going on. They don't care, they just kind of apply extra damage all the time. 
On top of that, another advantage to picking Hydra rather than the big missile, I don't, I don't even remember what it's called, is that if you get enemies that dodge, two of the missiles will still hit them. Uh, I think uh, it's also just a... Ah, Jesus. Uh, I think it's also just a straight up damage upgrade as well over the normal... Uh, over the big missile. Just having the Hydra at all. I need to stay on this platform and keep it suppressed, I think. And there, looks like we got a Forge with the suppression net. I haven't been paying too much attention to my teammates in this game. Um, there you can see I was sprinting and the shoulder mounted rockets fired anyway. Huh. That's what it's high on this. So, because I only have level 1 of the Lancer, it doesn't do too much damage to armor. If I had the Shredder mod instead of the uh, Stability mod, I would be using that instead. The way that armor works, like I said, it, it reduces the damage of each bullet by 50. If you use the Shredder mod, it'll give you, I think, up to 65% when it's fully upgraded. Uh, mitigation of that. So, uh, what is it? 65% of 50 is 32.5 armor ignored. So it only reduce your damage by 18 and a half, or 11 and a half, whatever. Um, which the starter M7 in multiplayer, at least, I think it does something like 80 or 90 damage, and you can get it up to about 100 pretty easily. Uh, and so you can see how. That would add out pretty quickly if you compare the damage to the damage from powers. The Lancer also has... Uh, the Lancer and the uh, Avenger are very similar weapons, both in look and function. But the Lancer, I maintain, is superior in basically every way. The Avenger fires more quickly and has less recoil, but it does less damage, less damage per second and doesn't have the advantage of being a heat weapon, so you have to worry about your ammunition. And you, as you can see, the recoil and things like that are very manageable. And here I'm providing... Uh, I was providing covering fire so this guy could move behind me and uh, try and go clear a path. We've got a Praetorian, or a couple Praetorians up ahead of us. This is wave 10. I don't feel bad. Even this all stupid. There we go. Got the first object down, the second one's over there. So now we duck, wait for our gun to cool down a little bit. At least there's, yeah, there's some guys up here that think they're cute. So we're going to politely suggest that they might not be. Yeah, I read him again again. But because it's the M7 Lancer and it's basically the greatest gun that's ever existed, and never will exist. By the way, Bioware, if any of the developers are watching this, please include a weapon like the M7 Lancer in Andromeda. If you haven't already, please, please do. I would very much appreciate it. Oh, we give our shields a moment to recover. And the Scion was killed by a teammate, which is excellent. Wonderful news, everybody. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is set up shop on here. Because this is where the extract always is on this map. And this is going to prevent any enemies from spawning back here because of my presence. 
and this is kind of an ideal location. It's not as good as being up on the ledge there where I was, but it does let me provide a lot of good support fire. And yeah, I didn't even see that guy. And Hog Launcher was just like, don't worry about it, man, I got you. Yeah, this, this class, I was struggling with it until I got the Lancer, and now it's it's just a cakewalk and I love it. Uh, this is one of the classes that I really wanted to respect for. I had chosen the large missile, and it ended up just firing into terrain all the time because it wanted to go up to bumfuck Egypt before it actually went toward a target. But, now that, uh... Now that I got the Hydra, the Hydra behaves much more the way I would expect it to. Uh, the missiles also, as you can see, stagger the enemy. Which, we all know how much I hate having damage effects that are pretty substantial on their own. And that also have built-in crowd control. Basically the worst problem you could ever have. For the time being, though, a very large portion, if not the bulk of my damage to armored targets, like Praetorians and Atlases and things of that nature, does end up coming from the Hawk Launcher. That's alright. I put a quarter of my points into it. It can do something nice. But a lot of people, when they see this class, they see its health and its stats and all that, and they think that it's a an aggressive character like a vanguard it is very much a fire support character but i hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching have a good one